Welcome to another new episode of Max 101. Today we'll be talking about HVAC. So if you don't know what HVAC is, it is heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. If you work in an office building or apartment building or any modern building or <laughs> whatever, then yeah, this is what keeps you cool at a 68 degrees when it's 100 outside. Every Max, Wes, bus, and streetcar vehicle in the system is air conditioned. Although they were retrofitted into the Type 1s, the, all of them have it and they all work. Or they're supposed to. I'm not really sure if I have many good videos of this, but if you ever look up in the trains, you'll see these big grills on the ceiling. Those are the return vents. Air does not blow down from these into the train. These are the return vents, so the air comes back up through these to go back outside. This is where you'll find the thermometers as well. The air coming into the train, it's very interesting how they do it. The air comes into the train through where the lights are. So the lights kind of hang down from the ceiling slightly, like they stick down into the train car a little bit. And if you notice on the sides, there are vents, and if you put your hands up by there, you should be able to feel the air coming in. So this is the air into the train. Those return vents are only for use in the summertime when it's going to be cooling the train. The Type 1 and 2 Max cars have a very simple system. It keeps the train at 68 degrees all year round. The Type 2s also have a nice feature which introduced baseboard heating in the trains. And those kick on if it's below 55 degrees outside and it has a set temperature of 66 degrees for the inside. If it's freezing cold outside, Avoid the middle of the Type 2s and 3s because there are no baseboards underneath there because that's where the wheel trucks are in the center of the train. So they didn't have room for baseboards. So just avoid the middle on the coldest days. A new system from Thermo King was rolled out when the Type 3s entered service. These have more of an advanced air conditioning system. Basically what it tries to do is it varies the internal temperature based on the external temperature. And by doing so, it's supposed to make it more comfortable inside the trains. If it's below 60 degrees outside, it will keep the internal temperature of the train at 66. And this will gradually scale up to 72 degrees once the outside temperature hits 72 or higher. The reason why they did it like this is because if you dress for the cold weather and it's cold outside, you're going to be bundled up in very warm clothing, and so they keep the temperature a little lower inside so it's more comfortable. And in the summertime, when you dress with less clothing and you're in a warmer train, it's going to be more comfortable that way as well. So if you're in shorts and a tank top or whatever, and 72 degrees is the internal set temperature, it's going to be more comfortable inside, and so you're not shivering. On the Type 5s and likely the future Type 6 vehicles, there's another new system that was introduced that has two fan speeds. If it's a middle temperature and it's kind of borderline heating and cooling, the fan speed stays on a very low setting, which I've showed before. I'll show some clips of what the HVAC sounds like on all five types of trains here in a little bit. But the lower fan speed is very quiet and it, it's just because Oregon is very confused most of the year. Um, if it's just the right temperature outside to where you don't really need much heat or cooling action happening, then it stays on a low speed. But as soon as the act for cooling the train faster or heating the train faster is needed, then the fan speed will click onto the higher setting. All of the train cars that are used are pressurized slightly higher than Portland's natural PSI. The reason they did this is so that when the doors open, it sends a burst of air outside instead of bringing all the cold air inside. Except after a couple seconds, the cold air will start to be flowing into the train, but they are pressurized in a way to when the doors open, it's pushing air outside rather than letting it all come inside. Now unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, all this HVAC stuff is all automatic. The drivers and all this do not have control over the temperature. You just have a switch that's for use for HVAC. It's not really much to work with. So if a passenger says, man, can you turn down the heat or something? It's really warm in here. Uh, not exactly. It doesn't really work that way. So here's the panel, a little switchboard. And it has a switch for HVAC, but it turns it off. You can't even turn it back on with that switch. The only way to turn it back on is to turn it back into the position where it would be on, 
and turn your auxiliaries off and back on. I'm, I'm going to be making a bonus episode that should be out tomorrow that talks about auxiliaries and what they are. And lots of times turning your auxiliaries off and back on is a good way of resetting a lot of things. And so if you're having problems with it blowing cold air, even though it's wintertime or whatever, lots of times that will fix it. I will now show you a clip of all five types of trains and what the HVAC sounds like in them, if you're nerdy enough like me. And it will have them in order, type 1 through type 5. And on the type 5, I will show you the low fan speed and high fan speed. And I'll show you those in just a second, but for now, I am out. I will see you on the next one.